Are we supposed to exist on water alone? Number one, gays have been doing it for forever. What kind of nasty fruit is that? Bora. Hey everybody and welcome to our all new Survivor recap. We break down everything you missed this week on Survivor as well as bring you funny video mashups, Twitter interaction, and it's so much more. But you already know the deal and you can follow me over at Twitter. I'm at Reality Recaps. Hey everyone, it's John Richardson. So excited to talk about last night's episode. You can follow me at Comedy Jonah on Twitter. Everybody, Michelle from the Bronx. You can find me at You Got Bronx on Twitter, and we're doing Survivor in HD. <laughs> right from the beginning. Oh my God, when they were walking back to the beach after that tribal council. Right. Oh my gosh, and they were all, oh my God, that was so good. And then the next day, they were all depressed and crying. And Brenda. Brenda, poor little thing, was crying and just hungry. I said last week, I didn't think that Eric was going to say that he gave them the vote. And finds out they're still unaware as of that episode that aired last night that they don't know that Eric tossed the vote to get Philip out. Were we watching the same show? Because Andrea talked about it to everybody. She was like, I don't understand why Eric threw the vote to Philip. Wait, I even watched the show twice. Stop. No, wait, wait. Just stop. Just stop. No, no, no. Because we're he here to recap show. for you. No. Let's just make it up. The exact conversation, I believe it was um, Andrea Cochran and uh, Dawn, they were sitting on the beach and Andrea... That was later on, though. Yeah, later on, but still in this that episode. That wasn't when they came back from the immunity challenge, though. I mean, from uh, the tribal council. Oh, I thought you meant in the whole episode he didn't confess. No, no. Just oh. when they came back from tribal. Are you two done? Are you, you got yeah, it together yeah. now? <laughs> yeah. Because here's, if we're starting at the beginning, John, here's what's really important. What was up with Malcolm? Did you guys notice in the blue light when they came back from Tribal? He was all like veiny. He was like one of those horror movies. He was white and you could see every vein in his body. Like the blood. Like Avatar. It looked like his adrenaline was just pumping so hard in his skinny little body. I think that they did that, obviously, for the girls that are digging and the guys that are digging the way he looks in, in the nighttime cam. That's it. What, vampire guys? Who is who is attracted to that? Wait a minute. Wait a minute. I guarantee you we might have a fan in that category. <laughs> Back to what you just said about Brenda John. I only have one point to make about her crying over, are we supposed to exist on water alone? Number one, gays have been doing it for forever. Okay. And... Number two, I have, I have two bottles. So you jealous, Brenda? I'm sorry, Michelle. I know you like Brenda. I can't stand her. I felt bad that that water she was drinking was so dirty. Oh, did you see it? It was gross. It, even, even living in the woods and on well water, that is non-drinkable looking water. <laughs> I would have taken somebody's dirty shirt, washed it in the ocean, and then filtered it through it before I would drink that water. But isn't it possible that, like, maybe it was just water with, like, some fruit in it or... No. Um, it was disgusting. It wasn't fruit in it because it was dirty. I don't know any fruit that looks that dirty unless she didn't wash it first. But the thing I want to really jump to is the food auction, you know? They're sitting there going, oh, we're all starving. We're all in bad moods. Oh, look, the food auction. I loved it when Malcolm was drinking the beer and all of their faces... I mean, it looked like they were watching porn. They were just like. Now, if I got the clue, I don't know what you guys would do. But if I got the clue, I wouldn't spend 60 seconds reading. I would spend 60 seconds looking at the picture. Because the visual of the picture would definitely tell me where it's at. Like, I would read, like, you know, okay, by the well, boom. But why would I spend 60 seconds reading? I'd be looking at the picture. Michelle. <laughs> what? The picture is a tree, and they're in the it's woods. A, but no, it had an arrow. It had oh. an arrow. It was a little cave. There was a tree next to it. It had, it had a green root going down. It, it was. I'm just saying, 
There's a lot of trees. What does it take you? 10 seconds to read the clue. 60 seconds, you don't focus on that. You look more at the picture. I, that's what I would have done. I would have looked more at the picture. Here's the deal, Survivor people. It's a food auction. I don't know why you're bidding any money until Jeff offers you an advantage in the game and then instantly bet $500. That's it. That's your own. It's a million dollars. I don't get these people that are bidding on food. You have a one in however many people are around you chance of winning a million dollars. And you're like, 350 on pizza. Moron. Well, I think when you're out there that long, it starts to mentally wear on you too. You know what I mean? You're starving. You're sleep deprived. You're starving. I mean. And you know you're going. And since you're fans, since you're fans, you've seen the show. You know one or two of these things is going to be a thing you all get to eat as a group. So you're going to get food. And, Sherry, you knew you were going home. So $500 for your pizza is... Do you want to talk about pork brains? Pig brains? Pork brains? Yes, please. Let's talk more about Brenda. She's so interesting. I felt bad that she was holding out to purchase something and then went buck wild on the brains. And then she's like, I don't even eat pork. Like, he said flat out, like, this is pig brains. You don't eat pork, so that went over your head for a moment, and you decided to eat it anyway. She had to eat, though, because <laughs> she had to eat because if she came off like a poor sport, I think that they would have targeted her even more for being a poor sport. I think my favorite part of it was when she asked Jeff, is this good for me? And Jeff is like, I don't know. <laughs> Jeff, who always, Jeff always has the answers, and he's like, I don't know. It's good for you, right? Eh? I have no idea. Maybe. That cameraman was great how he got the fly zooming in right on the on the pig brains, though. <laughs> I don't know what her problem is. She could have just covered it with the peanut butter. Hence why right? I hashtag, hence why I hashtag peanut butter pork brains and nobody retweeted it. I don't think that they could have, in all honesty. Why? Because you're not allowed to share. I don't know if you were allowed to share, so I think that probably edit-wise that the pork brains are already dead and done. Ugh. <laughs> already either eaten or thrown away at that point. Malcolm still had his his pretzel things when the peanut butter, disgusting, I'll never eat peanut butter again peanut butter came out. Oh, I loved it. Oh, I thought you loved it. I, I was like, oh, this is for Eric. I'm taking the screen cap for Eric with Eddie dipping his paw in there and just like, ah. Okay. Um, That's the most disgusting thing. It, it reminds me of like toddlers when they're eating their baby food. And then there's Brenda with peanut butter hanging off of her face. as if that was eyelash. Like, yeah. And I don't know why you think I'd like it, because I believe my tweet was, number one, peanut butter all over your face is disgusting. And number two, if you're starving, there's peanut butter all over your face. Brenda. Exactly. Like, who's going to lick that off my face if I put that on? You would, John? You would lick my if face? I was starving, yeah. Yes! Oh, I have one fan. What was it two seasons ago? What was his name? The old guy who would wash his underwear like in the food pot. Remember him? <sighs> I forget what his name was. Oh, yeah. Um, the roost. Um, Tarzan. No. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Tarzan. Not Tarzan. Yeah. Tarzan. Tarzan. Mm -hmm. And then Colton got the mysterious bacteria, which kicked him out of the game. <laughs> <laughs> the person that made out the best in all of that was Cochran. One. Because he got the the advantage. Yeah, well, I got news for Cochran. I really feel like this episode was a little bit of his tipping point from where, like, we can all be on his side with him winning and how he's acting because he's cute, quirky little Cochran. To this episode, it started kind of tilt a little more for me, like you're being cocky Cochran, like I've won all the challenges and I'm gonna, and now it's starting to get a little annoying, a little, a little <laughs> douchey. And I'm back. I'm on our show. Yeah. Let's talk about when they got their letters and who didn't get their letters, Dawn, Malcolm, and um, Sherry, right? Yeah, Dawn, Malcolm, Sherry. I cannot believe I remember all these facts. Um, yeah, I was a little surprised that nobody could buy their letters because he didn't say you have to buy the letters for twenty dollars he said here are the letters they're twenty dollars each i don't know why one of the other people didn't say 
I'll buy their letters for twenty dollars. Hmm. Okay, I think he said you can buy it if you have twenty dollars. Oh, this is an easy one. I have letters from your loved ones. They will be sold to anybody who wants it. To anybody. Anybody. To anybody. To anybody who wants it for twenty dollars. I think. I think that. I think that was what went down. Sorry. Of course, we have to talk about Malcolm looking for the clue and Andrea sitting on Malcolm's stump. Loved it. Loved it, loved it, loved it. But Malcolm should have dug for whatever clue he was looking for. And even if he found it with Andrea sitting right there under her nose, what is she going to do? Wrestle it, wrestle, wrestle it from him? It's not going to happen. He should, have, he should have kept digging and looking and don't care. It was pretty funny. But, you know, too, I mean, if she's following him and there's a good chance she could get it for herself. So I think he was trying not to take that chance, but he should have been more strategic. Two points to this. Number one, we all know from the end of the episode, he said he wouldn't have played it even if he actually had it. So it really doesn't matter. But number two, you know what I would have done in that situation? I would have just waited for Andrew to be called to go do her like diary sessions for the day and then went and did it. Just production clearly wants Malcolm to have these idols. He could have just looked at production and like, is it time for someone to go do their um, interviews now? I would have just knocked her out with a coconut. Kudos to Andrea, though. Brilliant gameplay on her part. Yeah. But I thought it was brilliant gameplay. And I actually thought Cochran, when he left, I thought Andrea was keeping Malcolm busy so that uh Cochran could go look for it that was my first thought but just as stupid as Malcolm is for not going and looking for it and granted we don't all know because we don't get to see everything I think all of the old stealth or us are just as stupid they should have been like we know the general area if Malcolm gets it one of us are is going home so why are you not all in there digging all eight of you six of you how many of us should have been there digging everywhere none of you did so nope whatever Nope. Or is it because they are all much tighter than the edit makes us think they are, and they all were secure in the way the vote was going to go? Uh, if Malcolm does or doesn't find it, it didn't matter because one of the amigos was going home. Yes, because what I would like to know about the immunity challenge, and I did not go back and watch this, when Cochran used his advantage, he was only one not down, correct? So when he's like, I'd like to use my advantage now, he only went back up one knot. Why didn't he wait until he was two knots down to go up two knots? He knew that the other guys came in a lot heavier, so they would have a lot more to hold as they went down two notches. So if he's going from one and then has a grip on the other, his hand isn't as tired the odds are that you're going to win. I did think that he played it too early in the beginning, but he played it what worked well for him, I guess because he knew what his pre-camp weight was. And it worked. And PBS, I mean PBS. <laughs> no, 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 you ready? I was going to say, and we're on downtown Abbey. <laughs> I was going to say, and PS CBS. I know you think your editing is trying to trick us and throw us off, but all it does is give it away. Because when you have Eddie going into the challenge saying, Cochrane is by no means any type of physical threat whatsoever. Why don't you just say, Cochrane's winning, it's going to come down to me and Cochrane and he's going to win. Because as soon as it came down to them two, it was clear, oh yeah, two seconds ago we had Eddie's confessional saying, Cochrane would suck at this, he's not strong. Just saying, that editing kind of gives it away. You're not fooling us, you're giving it away. Uh, Eddie Eddie tweeted out last night that he was looking like a hot werewolf with, with a six-pack or something. Like, that was his comment on the challenge. And while he can do no wrong to me, I'm just saying, like, that's what you're throwing out after this whole episode. I look like a werewolf with great abs. That's... Thank you, Eddie. Sounds like something a douche would say. Hot douche. <laughs> So we're back to camp. We have done the food challenge. We have done the um, immunity. Now we've got Eric talking strategy, which he says he never does, with Dawn confessing, hurry up, hurry up, I have diarrhea. Yuck. Thanks, John. <laughs> At Comedy Jonah. I thought you were going to 
go to a nice place for a moment and I'm nodding along and I can't nod along with you on this one, John. Have you met me? <laughs> really? The one that wants to come out looking like the hero right now and is playing everybody again is Sherry because she's just like, I I'm making all the moves here. I'm the one that's in control of the game. That I didn't get. Why? How was she in control of the game? She can barely do any challenges, so she might go with the Amigos. She might stay with her alliance. How was that power? Explain it to me. Reynolds went to her in front of Malcolm, mm -hmm. so they thought that they were getting they were getting Sherry, and then they knew that they would that they thought that they had Eric, but then they didn't really have Eric because they didn't solidify that with Eric and we didn't get to see anything and there's no secret scenes of them having conversations with Eric so Sherry the only thing with her is like I'm king of the world standing on a mountain and this is my game Sherry <laughs> you're a little delusional okay. go back in the water <laughs> I totally agree I mean how can you sit there and go I have all the power I have all the power I, you, she might as well have whispered it I mean, who, nobody even knew. How do you have all the power and no one knows? She's she's bottom rung on every on every person's list. Mm. Like when it comes down to it, which I'm so surprised she didn't take the offer from Malcolm. Hey, Malcolm, when you're trying to bring somebody into your alliance, the pitch shouldn't be I can offer you fifth. Just saying, not a good sales pitch. Not a good sales pitch. Why don't you be like, I can offer you fifth and, I don't know, some food, yeah. something. All right, let's talk about Tribal Council. Let's talk about Philip's mad face. Bitter agent man. Bitter agent man. Totally. Philip is playing, I feel like he's playing the long con, if you will. I really think Philip played... <laughs> <laughs> Philip played his first season with a shtick in order to get brought back on with that shtick, which he's doing again this season, the whole entire Stealth or Us, blah, blah, blah. Now, after the fact, he is miraculously not being bitter on all of his interviews. He's playing up his whole shtick again, and he's playing the long game. He wants to be brought back on to Survivor again, and knows he needs to be this character and have people like him, which is always the way that I said I would play any reality show I went on. My goal would not be to win, it would be to be brought back again another time where I would use what I know to win. Yeah, um, I think Philip just ate crow with Malcolm when he went to Ponderosa, yeah, and that was it. I think Philip's jumped the shark as far as Survivor's concerned. I I, I don't ever want to see Philip again. Neither do I. I don't hear him. I don't well, see him. I got news for the both of you. <laughs> <laughs> well, if we have him on the show, then that might be something different. Why doesn't everybody comment and let us know in the section below what you guys think? Do you think Philip will be back or won't be back? Are you correct like me or wrong like them? Well, I think also, too, I think it's a bad thing to say, like Andrea says, you know, I think I'm being targeted tonight. Do you really want to announce that at Tribal Council, even if you are? I mean, you're just reminding everyone how to vote. <laughs> she was, so. She was, and saying it out loud at Tribal Council, you're reminding everyone how you to vote, right? And they went to a revote, and they didn't draw rocks, and they didn't have to build a fire. And I kind of want to see a tiebreaker that comes down to a little bit more activity than a revote. Just miss those kind of old days. <sighs> so on the day after, I did watch Malcolm's day after. He did say he would like to do it a third time. He's came so close. He's learned a little bit about himself. He's become humble about himself. And yesterday he tweeted that he would be wearing a sombrero all day. And to that I'd say, really, Malcolm, you're willing to have <laughs> another one in 13 chance at a billion? You are such a good person to think of all of us to make good TV. <laughs> I'm so glad you're willing to have that one in 13 chance at a million again. Third time's a charm. Worked for Rob. Because one of the Amigos actually voted for him. Oh, they did? Which one? Yes, your boyfriend. Open oh, mouth, close mouth, Eric. Hello. We'll be watching the same episode. Watching the same episode, Eric. Huh? Hello. But you're talking about on the revote he vote, but that's fine because 
he uh, that's fine. He didn't do it on the original no, he, vote. No, he should have just voted for Andrea. No, because he was probably they probably all agreed, look, if the revote comes down, it's gonna be me. Just go with the tribe so you're not isolating yourself more. He's already isolated and he's he's now he's down to Don't talk bad about my boyfriend. <laughs> Don't now. talk bad about they're Eddie. No longer, they're no longer three amigos, they're freaking frack. Like seriously. Doesn't matter how they vote. Looks really douchey when you hold up a sign and say, "Hey, buddy, I was with you all up until this." And I'm writing your name down. That is a douchey move. Douche, douche, douche. Look, Eddie, Eddie, right here. You're fine. Thanks for watching. See you next time. All right, you guys. I'm out of here. Done talking about Survivor. Hola. <laughs> Well, that about wraps up the show for this week. Now, don't forget to follow all of us on Twitter because we're always live tweeting during the Survivor shows. And you should head over to Your Reality Recap if you're a fan of The Amazing Race or any of Bravo shows because we recap those as well. Although The Amazing Race recap is much shorter not a discussion like this, and it's funny, trust me, you'll like it. So, you guys go check out, out all of that over at yourrealityrecap.com and we'll see you back here next week. Bye for now. Oh, who's calling? I bet it's Michelle. No, it's John Richardson. Five hundred.